The following is a commercial program paid for by Little Rock Trojan Sports Properties, Learfield, and the University of Arkansas, Little Rock. The opinions and views expressed belong to its sponsors and are not those of Mission Broadcasting Incorporated, Next Star Broadcasting Incorporated, this station, or their affiliates or employees. There is a new head Trojan in Little Rock to lead Little Rock's team. He's no stranger to Arkansas and the game of basketball. He has coached in the NBA and now brings his coaching ability to Little Rock to lead the Trojans. This is the Daryl Walker Coaches Show with host Ray Tucker. The Daryl Walker Coaches Show is brought to you by Stevens Incorporated, Cleve Addy Incorporated, Zips Car Wash, Glazers Distributing, and these fine brands. We urge you to drink responsibly. And Dillard's Department Stores. Here with Ray Tucker is head Trojan, Daryl Walker. I don't care what division you're playing in. If you can go on the road and win not one, but two games in three days, that's pretty darn good. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for my guys. I've talked about this before, Ray. They've been working hard. They've had some tough breaks this year going down, losing some games at the bars. And for these young kids to go out and compete the way they compete on the road was really big. All right, it, this is the, the difference one week can make in college basketball. <laughs> Especially in the Sunbelt Conference. <laughs> yeah, let, let's take a look at the standings, if we may. And this time a week ago, we were sitting in last place, and it worked our way up into a tie here with Tro Troy and Arkansas State at 4-7. and seven. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not satisfied with the tie, and my guys are not satisfied with the tie. We have one goal, and that's to get to the Sunbelt Conference Tournament. Uh, Texas State and Texas Arlington, you see them at the top of the league there. Guess what? Those two teams come to town this week. They're, they're coming, and uh, Texas State gave us a good good butt kicking down there, and, and, uh, and Texas Arlington gave us one. So we're, I'm really, as a coach, I'm really looking forward to these two teams coming in. Hopefully we'll get some fans in there for the games. All right, let's, let's take a look at the, the, the two wins of the week. We'll start out with the first game, which was against Troy uh, on, on the road. And so here we go, Coach. That's, that's Ray John Tucker making, a, of course, another athletic move to the basket. Uh, what a beautiful facility they have down there, too, in Troy, Alabama. Beautiful pass by Kamani to Lottie for a layup. Uh, we played we play, we play just solid basketball, didn't turn the ball over. You know we have had 17 turns. The game was over with, so we turned the ball over maybe four or five times in the last three or four minutes, but we really took care of the basketball, which was big. Won that one 84 to 70. Uh, first half, <coughs> he shot, <coughs> excuse me, shot four, 45%. On threes, one of seven in the first half, 14%, and you're sitting over there going, you got to be kidding me. I know these guys can knock some of those down. Uh, we had we had some open looks. We did not didn't knock them down. We went, I think we went in halftime down six. I do believe Ray. I thirty six thirty. Told the guys we we're right in the basketball game to just go out and defend, and the shots would fall because we were getting good looks, and we kept defending and kept pushing the basketball. And beautiful pass right there for, for a layup there to to Nicola. Uh, it came out defensively and really played well. Uh, shared the basketball, had nineteen assists, which I thought was really really big. Now, you would take this every game if you could get it. The sec <laughs> second, ha <coughs> second half, you shot 78% from the, f from the field, 77%, 7 of 9 on threes, and 3 of 4 at the free throw line. Well, I'll tell you what, that's, uh, that's every coach's dream to have those numbers right there. But you know, realistically, you're not going to have those numbers. Some nights you will. Uh, we shot the ball well, but we also, uh, once again, Raymond Harper, how we took care of the basketball. We defended and was able to get out in the open court. That was DeAndre Burns giving a beautiful pass to Ray John Tucker right there. You shot 63.5% for the game. Yeah, we, we, that we, win, that'll win a lot. That'll win a lot of games. I wish we could bring some of that to the Jack Stevens Center, even though we do well. Uh, we do shoot well to Jack Stevenson. We're going to need that this, this next couple of games, Thursday and Saturday, coming up against two Texas teams. I want our viewers to look at the seats you, and see the color, color of those seats there. It makes it look like people are in them when there aren't people Not in the seats. Not many people in there, but it, it looks like people are in the seats, but they have a great facility there. In the Troy game, uh, Ray John Tucker led the way, 24 points. Nicola had 12. Uh, DeAndre Burns had 12. And Marquise Noel had 11. So yeah, we had, balance, we had some balance We had some balance scoring. Like I said, we almost had, you know, we almost had 20 assists, had 19 assists. We shared the basketball. We rebounded the basketball. That's Kamani Johnson who I think is really coming on as, a, as one of our freshmen. He's really playing solid basketball. Played well against South Alabama too. We had a feature last week on John Barron, the strength coach. When he gets through with Kamani Johnson in the <laughs> offseason, he's going to be, be a totally different young man. Yeah, if he commits to, to John Barron and get in there and work on his shot a little bit, it's the, the ceiling is very high for Kamani Johnson. He's, he's really coming on. He's figuring out where he can score, where he can play. And I like the development that he's that he's shown along with Marquise Noel. So what was the end result of him not showing up for a session with John Barron? <laughs> you know, that, that the rule that I put in happened after that. So I don't, I don't think he's missed any more sessions, I can guarantee you that. I don't think he wants to be in the 5 o'clock club. 
Not at all. I, and I don't think anybody else wants Nobody to else either. Nobody either. Beautiful pass here by uh, Marquise. And, of course, you know, Chris Banks, I think, leads the nation in field goal percentage in the top two. Of course, he's finished right there. So I was happy for these guys. These guys were really happy in the locker room. And, and we, I told them to celebrate, but let's celebrate not too much. Let's get ready for South Alabama. And we did. Uh, that, that is quite the trip. We flew into Atlanta, <laughs> uh, bust over to Troy. From there, uh, after the game, went to Mobile for the South Alabama yeah, game. Yeah, that's, that's, that's part of college that's, basketball. Hey, that's, that's quite a trip. You went down the road. You've never been down no, before, Coach. No, no. I, I know the cell phones didn't work too much either. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I enjoyed the trip. I know everybody's talking about that Mobile trip. We took the trip back. Uh, the trip is always better when you're coming back on a long trip when you get a win. And again, the, the final in this one, the uh, Trojans win this one. The Trojans of Little Rock win this one. <clears throat> 84 to 70, so that was a sweet win for that you. That was a good win. Anytime you can get a win, especially on the road, it's a good win. You know teams win 73% of the time uh, at home, and that was a good, good win for us. That's Ray John falling up that miss by Chris Banks. You never see Chris miss too many, especially one that close. You know, one of the things that uh, you coaches do when you go on the road, you say, uh, oftentimes you say, we, we want to win too, but, but if we can get a split, and so you, you go and win the first game, which really made it much much better and, and, and for now you. Now you're playing with house money when you go to the oh, second exactly. game. Oh, I, you're, you're, I, basically, you're definitely playing with house money when you go with, to the second game. We were able to get that second game, too, which that, was big. That, that, that is a nice, nice way to put it. And again, uh, a decent crowd at Troy. Yeah, it, it was a beautiful facility, but I, I was more concentrating on our, my team coming out and taking care of the basketball, Ray, and then playing what we need to do on the road, and we did. We shot the daylight side of the ball, too, so that helped. All right, we're coming up on a break here. When okay. we come back here in just a moment, uh, we'll take a look at highlights of the South Alabama game. Again, this was a game where you came from behind. Yes, yes it was, and uh, we showed some resilience by just not giving up. I just told the team just keep chipping away, chipping away, chipping away, and they did. We wound up getting the win. All right, Trojans get a win over Troy. When we come back, we'll take a look at the win over South Alabama. And shameful. There's never an acceptable reason for driving dirty. Not with Zip's Unlimited Wash Club. For as little as $14.95 a month, members join Unlimited Washes. That's less than 50 cents a day. So, show some pride and Zip's your ride. Join Zip's Unlimited Wash Club today. Zip's three minute car wash. Zip in, zip out, zip on. When did too big to fail replace too smart to fail? When did trend overtake truth? When did putting clients first stop being second nature? For us, never. You can't take a risk in any investment that if it goes wrong and you lose it all, that you endanger the ability of the firm to survive. And that's really what Wall Street forgot. So when do you want to learn more about Stevens, one of the country's most successful investment banking firms? Looking for something dependable this outdoor season? Then you're ready for steel outdoor power equipment. Cleve Addy Outdoor Equipment on Geyer Springs offers you a full line of steel products built for power and dependability. Trimmers, blowers, chainsaws, edgers, and lots more. Steel products provide comfort and features that help you get the job done right. Craig and the staff at Cleve Addy have a long list of satisfied customers because your needs are their top priority. Are you ready for more power? Get to Cleve Addy Outdoor Equipment on Geyer Springs today. It's not just a coaster, you know. It's an invitation. Jim Beam on the rocks. The bourbon that's been making history since 1795 invites you to make some of your own. It was a great week to be a Little Rock Trojan basketball fan. Joe Foley's team played at home, won a couple of games. We went on the road and won a couple, played at Troy, moved over to Mobile, South Alabama. You know, I don't know what it is. <laughs> when, when I go south, the weather goes in the tank. It was cold in Mobile. Uh, it was beautiful in Troy, but it was really chilly down there in Mobile. I thought it was going to be warm in Mobile because we were further south. Well, that, that common sense would say that. But uh, anyway, it was like 78 in Troy and about 50 degrees in uh, South Alabama. Uh, the Trojans were red hot at Troy, didn't shoot well against South Alabama, but the bottom line is it came away with the win. Well, we, we defended and we took care of the basketball, Ray. I, I wasn't concerned about our shooting percentage. I told our guys at halftime to keep chipping away because we had a lot of open looks in the first half against, against uh, South Alabama that we did knock down, and, and we, sh we shot the ball better in the second half. Uh, the, final, defense, the defense was solid, though. Excuse me. Final score uh, the game you're watching right here, 70 
73-68. Trojans win it, and another come from behind win. Yeah, another come on the road. Uh, great steal right there by Kamani Johnson. This team grew up a little bit and still in progress, but we, I, I can I could see us growing up a little bit on the road, uh, playing with some confidence and playing with some poise and playing under control. Beautiful move by Kamani Johnson right there. It's a really good steal right there and one right there by the young fella. The luxury you have with him, you can put him out front at 6'8", or he comes out, and he, he is pretty good about overplaying and no. go and go and get the basketball. No, I can put him on the head of the press. I can put him on the front of the zone. Uh, he's a unique player. He's I kind of cut him a junkyard player. He kind of does a little bit of everything. Didn't play well in the first half. Dre Burns came off the bench and gave us a nice lift. Uh, Dre has a great one of the best mid-range games in college basketball. Uh, this team played zone the whole game, and I was kind of happy. It gave us a whole lot of zone work that I thought that we needed, Ray. So that was good for us to really play, play against the zone, attack the zone. Some beautiful interior passing right there. Kamani to Nicola, Nicola right there. And, uh, we just kept attacking their press. I told the guys when they want to press up, make sure we attack and make them pay. And you put Dre Burns in the middle with the ball. He's a dangerous guy. You guys worked work against that. You, you knew it was coming, yes. and, and your guys executed well. They executed well. Uh, we took care of the basketball. I only think we turned the ball over 13 times. Uh, uh, Ray, when you do that, you're going to have a chance to, to win. Uh, that's that's Kamani getting out in the break right there. You know, he, he's running right there, but it's another level he can go too far as conditioning. He's young and doesn't understand that yet. But when he figures that out, he's going to be just a solid, solid player for this team for a long time. It was 38-29 South Alabama at the half, and here we see the Trojans as they come back. Yeah, beautiful spin move by Ray John Tucker. I mean, he does some incredible moves uh, around the basket. Like I said, zone the whole game. Just good passing inside out, attacking the zone off the dribble. I tell my guys all the time to attack the gaps in the zone to move the ball and move bodies. First half, you shot 34% from the field. Uh, second half, uh, 12 of 24, 50% uh, for the game, 42%. Yeah, yeah. But defensively, I just thought we were, we were solid. We shared the basketball. We pushed the ball when we had chances. Got open looks just like that right there before the zone could set up. All right, in this South Alabama game, uh, the injury bug has is, 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 <laughs> is been all over us all season long. Uh, Marquise Noah went down, uh, shot a floater in the paint, came down on a guy's foot, and doesn't look good for him right now. No, doesn't look good, even though I talked to Mike, Big Mike yesterday, and he said his, his ankle was feeling a lot better. Uh, Lottie, I don't know what's going on with him, so we just have to figure out in the next couple of days what we're going to do. And J.J. Lottie is a young man who broke a finger in the Memphis State, uh, excuse me, Memphis game. Yes. Back on the 19th of December, everything was looking good. Stung it in practice, and things all swollen. Yeah, up. well, you saw his hand, Ray, is really swollen, and uh, not a good look, so hopefully we can get one of those guys back at least. That's Marquise making a shot right there from behind the three-point line. And, uh, this team is, I can sense this team is, 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 is starting to have confidence. This team is starting to figure out what we can do, and, and, and that's good. As a coach, I can kind of see it. Uh, this injury bug right here is not coming, at the, not coming at the right time. What I've seen out of Marquise Noel the last two games, uh, he finally got the message about playing defense. Uh, as a as a point guard and a defender as a guard, uh, if you can hound the guy on the other team bringing the ball down, you don't have to steal it from him. You can just make his life miserable. And Marquise did a pretty nice job. Now, in the that. last three or four games, he's been doing a good job of really getting up on the ball, extending the pressure, and really pressuring the guards and making the offense tough for the other team. And when you're that size, you have to affect the game that way because when you get across half court, sometimes you become a liability. Uh, he, he'll pick your pocket if you yeah, don't watch no, him. Yeah, that's Marquis. Beautiful yeah, move, breaking the press by himself, shooting the floater. There's the play where he went down right there, and he's he, in an awful lot of pain. He came right down that ankle, and we just kept playing. Uh, Johnny came in off, the, came in, and, and, and really gave us a lift with a couple of layups, timely layups. And, uh, overall, I thought this was a great team effort. That's Nicola with a beautiful move. Uh, he's getting more comfortable. We can stop him from traveling, but he's getting more comfortable as a player. Ray John raising up right there. But Nicola right there finishing with the offensive rebound. He won't see Rajon put up air, air balls very <laughs> He often. shot a couple. And I told him he needed to start putting the ball on the floor and mixing it up and driving to the basket. So. Rajon had back-to-back -back games, 24 points. He had nine rebounds in that one. He went two of 14 on threes. <laughs> that won't happen very often. At least I hope it won't I, happen again. I'm watching the film. He had some good looks, Ray. And when I show film session today, he had, he had some looks when they were really rushing out hard. He needed to pump fake and put the ball on the floor and get to the basket or create a shot. For his teammates. Uh, Kamani Johnson had 15 points, six rebounds in that game, and again, a, a nice win over South Alabama. Yeah, it was, it was a good win. Anytime you can win two, two, two on the road is really good, and that was great for us. All right, I was yeah. happy for this team, Ray, because we, we, we've had some tough losses. I was happy for my kids. Well, prior to that, you had three games where you, you lost by a combined six points. Yes. And so these guys just hung in there, and they bought into your system, and so they were ready to go. we got two we big games coming up at home. Need the fans out there, too. All right. We, we'll take a break here on the Darrell Walker Coaches Show. We come back, we'll have a visit from legendary coach Mike Woodson.
When you choose West Rock Coffee, you realize that it's much more than coffee. This coffee is changing lives from crop to cup. Join us by making a difference, one sip at a time. Find West Rock Coffee at your neighborhood grocery store or on Amazon Prime. Little Rock Trojan fans, you don't want to miss the 2019 Sunbelt Conference slate. Get to the Jack Stevens Center with your own conference flex plan or by getting your group to the Jack with some of the top experiences in Little Rock. With 18 home games between our men's and women's programs, you don't want to miss out on the action. Be sure to call the Trojan Ticket Office today at 565-8257 or visit lrtrojans.com for more information. This is our city and our team, so make sure to come out and support your Trojans. This year, make your outdoor living area more enjoyable. Get yourself an Xmark mower from Cleve Addy Outdoor Equipment on Dyer Springs. Use what the pros trust and come demo the Xmark Radius Zero Turn Rider or the Quest for commercial grade residential landscaping needs. Purchasing Xmark products is easy and affordable with their special finance offers. Craig and the staff at Cleve Addy can get you what you need and repair what you already have. Are you summer ready? Get to Cleve Addy Outdoor Equipment on Dyer Springs today. It's not just a coaster, you know. It's an invitation. Jim Beam on the rocks. The bourbon that's been making history since 1795 invites you to make some of your own. When you spent as many years in the National Basketball Association as Coach Walker did, you, you established a number of wonderful friendships. As we go around the country traveling, uh, we run into some of your cronies. Uh, when we were at Clark University in Atlanta, you had a gentleman by the name of Mike Woodson who was the former head coach of the New York Knicks and the Atlanta Hawks for a number of years. Out of basketball right now because he had back surgery. He paid your team a visit and here's what he had to say. Mike Woodson played in Indiana. I worked with him in New York with the Knicks when we had a good run there. He just came out to watch you guys practice. Good friend of mine. Damn good basketball coach. Go ahead, Woody. Yeah, good coach, too. Hey, look, guys, let me just say, and I keep this short and brief. It's an honor to be here. You know, Daryl called me. Uh, we talked this morning about me coming over and speaking. You know, I want all you guys to look at that uniform that you're wearing. What does it say on that? Bull Rock. Bull Rock. That uniform right now is the most important thing you should ever be thinking about. That is your classwork. Those are the only two things. There's a reason why you wear that uniform. You've got to cherish it, man. They gave you an opportunity, Gerald and his coaching staff, to come and play for Little Rock. Think about that. How, how huge is that? That's important, man. You got to value that uniform and do whatever it takes to wear that uniform to be a winner. It hurts when you lose. Losing has got to hurt. But when you win, all of you guys celebrate. You high five, you, you laugh. Those are the memories that you got to you gotta cherish when you win. Because when you win, and you win consistently, you figure it out. And it becomes contagious. You know, it's just not a win here and you lose two or three there. You know, when you win two or three in a row, you got to ball up, man, and make it contagious where it's just hard to lose. It's hard to lose. Starts on the defensive end, offensively, you got to learn to share it and cherish that ball. This thing is so important. Everybody wants to score the ball, but you got to learn to share it, cherish it. Get shots because it's a coming back the other way when you got to get stops. So that's the ugly part of the game. But the most valuable part of the game is on the defensive end. That's how you win. You defend, you rebound, push the ball up the floor, and you play offense and have fun. And the only way you can play good offense is that you take care of the basketball. You got to cherish this thing like it means something. 
share the ball, get good shots, score, run people out of the gym, come back down here on the, on the defensive end, get nasty, rebound the ball, and come back and do the same thing. That's, that's how basketball is played. Most important thing, though, you got to listen to your coach. I say that all the time, man. Coaching is hard. I don't give a level you coach at. This man's been coaching a long time. Different, different spots. Daryl's been coaching a long time. His assistant there has been coaching a long time. It's hard to coach. So I respect all coaches. I don't care what level you coach at. It's hard. Because you got to find players that are willing to buy into what you're doing. That's how you win. And if you buy in, I guarantee you he's going to make you a player and you're going to have fun. I've seen him do it. He's done it with me in New York, where we took a team that hadn't been in the playoffs in how many years, Gerald? 18 years? 18 years. And we make the playoffs the first year with that team. And then we even got better the next year. You know, so that's what it's all about, man. You've got to listen to your coach because I guarantee you, and I've known Daryl a long time, he wants nothing but the best for all you guys on and off the floor. It ain't just about out here. You know, you got to be able to do things the right way off the floor as you grow. You guys are young men, 60 years old, man. I have been around the block a few times, and I've had a lot of great mentor, mentors who – who helped me along the way. And without them, I don't know if I would be here today. I was telling you, your, your, your radio guy here, this is the third time in 33 years I've been away from basketball. Think about that. I've been in the NBA 33 years as a player, 11 years, and 22 coaches. And I feel pretty good about being away from the game. You know, it's, it gives me a chance to regroup, and rekindle some things before I think about going back. But I'm telling you, man, you got to listen to your head coach and your assistant coaches because they want nothing but the best. You know, when he's in, it's about playing defense, getting on the floor for a loose ball, sharing the basketball. It's all in good in good life, man. I mean, it ain't. Hey, look, I played for one of the toughest coaches in college basketball, Bob Knight. I don't know if you ever heard of him. I played at Indiana University four years, and it didn't come no tougher than that. I seem to turn out just fine, just fine. So he ain't going to make you do nothing that he hadn't already done. I promise you that. But you got to do it his way, and you got to be good students off the floor and good men off the floor. That's what it's all about. All goes hand in hand. It really does. Man, get in here. Thank you. All right, brothers on three. One, two, three, brothers. <laughs> you need a bottle of that speech, Coach. <laughs> I didn't pay him for that speech, but Mike, that's the type of guy that Mike Woodson is. We know he played for Bobby Knight, had a legendary career at the University of Indiana, and one of the most underrated coaches I think that's been in the NBA in a long time. He's been out with some back surgery, but it was great for him to come visit our guys. Is he a good golfer? Oh, I told him up the last time we played, oh, and he said, yeah. he, said, he said his back is feeling better now, so we'll see the next time we get together. All right, we'll take a break, and we'll come back and take a look at the week ahead for our Little Rock Trojans. When did too big to fail replace too smart to fail? When did trend overtake truth? When did putting clients first stop being second nature? For us, never. You can't take a risk in any investment that if it goes wrong and you lose it all, that you endanger the ability of the firm to survive. And that's really what Wall Street forgot. So when do you want to learn more about Stevens, one of the country's most successful investment banking firms? It's not just a coaster, you know. It's an invitation. Jim Beam on the rocks. The bourbon that's been making history since 1795 invites you to make some of your own. Duck hunting with Evans is one of my favorite things to do. It's a tradition in our family, and we've been hunting for generations in Arkansas. I grew up hunting with my dad, and now I do it with Evan. And it allows us to spend time together. It allows us to be outside and enjoy Arkansas, teaching them about nature, teaching them about the life lessons that come with it. It's one of my favorite things to do. Shop Vail Chevy. 
and BaleChevy.com today. Independence, the ability to think freely. It allows you to tell truth from trend, to put clients first, to take the long view. We're privately owned. We don't have public shareholders, and that's the very significant difference between ourselves and other firms. Since 1933, Independence has made Stevens one of the country's most successful investment banking firms. Feel free then to learn more about us. We were a little short on time when we wrapped up that last segment after Mike Woodson talked to your basketball team. Talk about your, your friendship with Mike Woodson. You, you all coached with the Knicks, also were assistant coach with New Orleans. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was sitting at home out of a job, and Mike Woodson got the job with the New York Knicks in the middle of the season. I get this phone call saying, I'm not a head coach, and I want you to be my assistant coach. Can you get on the plane and meet us in Indianapolis? I said, absolutely, I can. So got my stuff packed, went to Indianapolis, we won the game. and. Uh, wound up with, working with Mike Woodson for two years with the New York Knicks. What an unbelievable coach, but more than that, what an unbelievable person he is and a man. Unbelievable. I've learned so much about the game of basketball from Mike Woodson. Now, you guys were sitting off to the side as your team was practicing at Clark University. I look over there, and it's like like two kids in the Sandlot game drawing up plays on a, on a chalkboard. Uh, he's, 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 a, he's, a, he's a coaching junkie, and I am too. We're always, we call it doodling on the board, trying to figure out something that can help your team get a shot or a game-winning basket. And he was showing me some things, and I was showing him some things. So it was, it was a tip attack going back and forth, and it was fun because I missed that with Coach. So how many different inbounds plays no. like that do, you, do you co have, the you coaches can, have? You can have thousands. I don't care how many plays you got. You better have some good basketball players that's running those plays. That's the most important thing. Mike Woodson, will he get back into coaching, you think? I don't think he'll go back to NBA. I've been talking to him and pushing him toward college, and he's, he's going to try to get him a college job uh, when the season's over with. I think he'll be a great uh, college basketball coach, very bright, very in intellectual type of guy. I think he would relate really good with, with, the, with the young guys these, today that's playing. So I'm pushing him toward college. So what kind of adjustment is that from the travel that you guys have in the NBA to where you are now co coaching in the mid-major? It's going to be totally different uh, travel if he decides to get a job. I don't know what level job he'll, he'll get, but he's going to – I don't know how that, that back of his is going to stand up on a bus ride because, you know, he had major back surgery. But he wants back in. He wants to get to college. I think he'd be great, Ray. I really do. I think he'd be great. Is it tougher to coach college or, or pro guys? I think it's easier to coach in, in, in college because you have more of the hammer. In the NBA, the guys have more of the hammer unless you pop a bitch or some coach has been there for 15, 20 years. Uh, I think you get the right, got right guys in college. They want to learn how to play the game. You get to teach more, and that's what I like to do, and that's what Woody likes to do. He really likes to teach. So, you know, he's, a, he's, a, he's been up under Larry Brown basically his whole career for a lot of time. Uh, Mike Woodson was, so he wants to teach the game. All right, so you made mention of the hammer. The hammer's <laughs> coming down 6.30 tomorrow night at the Jack Stevens Center. Texas Arlington comes to town. Again, that start at tip off is at 632. We hope you will be in attendance for that. We will come back on Saturday, Saturday afternoon. It is Texas State in town. That is a three o'clock game. These are not double hitters. These, these are just men's games. So should be a fun time. We, we got to have folks there. We, we need you out. We, we need your help. Uh, we need the support. I mean, the A-State crowd was great, but the crowd's been good all year. But we, we really need some, some people in the stands because these are the two leading teams coming in in the Sun Belt Conference to play at the Jack Stevens Center. All right. You won't see better basketball than this in this state this week. So come out to the Jack Stevens Center. Again, that is Thursday, 630, Saturday at 3 o'clock, and that will be Texas State. Hope to see you there. The Daryl Walker Coaches Show with host Ray Tucker has been brought to you by... Stevens Incorporated, Cleve Addy Incorporated, Zips Car Wash, Glazers Distributing, and these fine brands. We urge you to drink responsibly. And Dillard's Department Stores. Go Trojans!